So welcome, 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 our beloved, brilliant colleague, Alethea. We so appreciate your leadership and your consistent solidarity. And as always at Setsi, we begin all things by giving thanks to our creator, by giving thanks and acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We give thanks to all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We give thanks to all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So, Lethia, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? Amazing. First of all, Victor, thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Uh, it's an absolute honor to be able to connect with amazing individuals, like-minded individuals who are doing great things for our collective community. So thank you. A bit about my background. I wear multiple hats, and so I'll give you a broad overview about who Alethea is. I am the president and founder of a of the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. And we're located in uh, Shelburne. Dufferin County is just north of um, the Brampton Core. So all of the smaller municipalities that make up Dufferin County, Orangeville, Mono, Shelburne, and, and so forth. I also, um, as I mentioned, wear a different hat. I'm also recently appointed as a school board trustee for Upper Grand District School Board. And that appointment was new as of uh, December last year. And full time, I work for um, one of Canada's largest financial institution as a director of continuity and um, third party disaster readiness. So that's a mouthful, but a huge portfolio and a huge uh, opportunity to impact um, and make a difference as well. And last but not least, you know, one of my hobbies, things that I actually love doing as well is I host a um tv show on rogers network and so the focus of that is called in conversation with alethea and the focus is just to highlight individuals in the community particularly black individuals who are doing incredible things to sh showcase the spotlight on them and highlight all the great things that they're doing and just to celebrate greatness so that is it in a nutshell and on top of that i'm a wife a mom <laughs> so i've got a beautiful family as well that's it I love it. I love it. I love the way you work, weave all that together in such a remarkable way, even though that is some remarkable work, like the work you're doing in Dufferin County, the trustee piece, we're working full time and making sure that you know, the needs of your family are met. But most importantly, um, the work that you're doing in terms of building the capacity of our community alive on air. So once again, I just got, can't applaud your leadership and tenacity, you, you remind me a lot of all of the things that my <laughs> wife's doing. So I think that all Black women are super women when it comes to just the way you're able to juggle so much and make it um, look so easy and effortless. So once again, I appreciate um, your candor, your authenticity, and clear visionary leadership. So my next question is, what's inspiring you right now? What has you curious or what's keeping you up at night? Yeah, so you touched on a, a few points and I want to highlight, you talked about that superwoman effect and I really want to stress the importance of play and rest. And, you know, we we tend to carry a lot of, you know, weight on our shoulders. We tend to do a lot and dabble in different, uh, different areas. But I also make sure that I started journaling recently, right? Just to decompress, just to get my thoughts on paper. And it's a great way for me to reflect on all of the great things that I have in my life. I talked about my family. That is my gratitude portion, right? And so it's important for us as leaders, as we're going out there, conquering the world, doing amazing things to make sure that we're taking that time for ourselves, for us to rest, rejuvenate, recoup, and be better for that next day. Um, jumping into your next point, what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about our young people. Um, when I look at, you know, my young son, he's 17 now, and I look at what kind of world do I want him, his friends to grow up in? And so that kind of encourages me to persevere, go out there and do all the things that I believe I can do right now with my capacity, with my skill set to try and leave that footprint behind so that he can have a, a better future, a better future than the one that I'm currently in. Um, and so that's my main motivation. Um, and I look around again at the community. I see that there is so much untapped potential, right? But we haven't tapped into it. We haven't even scratched the surface. So the fact that I'm able to have a platform where I can showcase greatness in our community is, is another one of my passions. Um, and I'll pause because I know you talked about what keeps me up at night. So I'll pause before I dive into that question. 
Well, it's a perfect segue. What challenges and barriers are you facing in your work? And what are some of the approaches it takes to overcome them? Yes, fabulous. So one of the challenges that, that I face right now, specifically with my nonprofit, is, is often funding. Um, it's also getting um, the resources to help. Running a nonprofit, as you are, are, are fully aware of, it's time consuming. But in order for you to be effective, it takes time to document and make sure that there's processes in place and governance is in place, there's an, a structure. But also understanding that the people who are participating also have lives. They have full-time jobs, they have families, they have other commitments. So oftentimes when you're trying to bring the community together, you're tapping on the same resource and you're not getting the output and the outcome that you're looking for. So that's one of the biggest challenges. So how, how do I now build an organization that um, I'm not exhausting the few individuals that I have at the table doing the great work. The other component is um, the funding aspect of it. So how do we set ourselves up as a small grassroots organization? We are a registered nonprofit, but how do we set ourselves up for success so that we are getting some of those um, grant opportunities that are out there? And what have I done? To, to alleviate some of that, I am now leveraging my network. I am reaching out to different organizations. I see you have ACBN on the wall. I've had some conversations with Ryan around, you know, where we can take things. Um, and, you know, pre-call, you know, I talked about, oh my gosh, you know, you've got a wealth of knowledge. I need to tap into the knowledge and the experience that is already there. So those are some of the things that are underway and I will be pursuing um, post this call with you as well, Victor. Ashe, I couldn't agree more. Ryan is my beloved brother. We've known each other for 20 years. Um, founder Amazing. Of PBN. He's on our board at Setsi. Um, and he also um, is the founder of Detailing Nights. So we're hoping to, to see our beloved brother on Dragon's Den soon. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, yes. Let's make it happen. <laughs> well, I'm speaking into the universe. So yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So my second last question, what is your ultimate goal? And what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues? Success. So one of my dream um, dreams, um, it would be to have a fully funded scholarship for, for Black students. So we have scholarship opportunities right now, and it's usually a few, you know, thousand dollars or sometimes even less um, going to an individual. But I would love to be able to have uh, an individual fully funded throughout their post-secondary education. And the, the reason for that is, is to um create that legacy right and and to make sure that we're setting them up for success and build generational wealth university college is expensive and if we can and if i even look at my um immigrant story you know coming to canada as a young child having to take on the debt of you know university the opportunity to send someone to post secondary without having to wear that burden without having that debt that's game changing. That is life changing. That's generational changing, right? So if we are able to do that, at least starting with one student to send them off to post-secondary, that would be incredible and a huge um, progress. And hopefully that individual will turn around and, and give back to the community. So that's what I think about when I think about the legacy and um, one of the biggest dreams that I have for the organization. Um, other dreams that I have would be, you know, how can we support our local businesses? We have so many Black businesses right here in our small community, small town of Shelburne. How do we support them so that they're able to scale, right? How do we support them so that they're able to continue to grow and serve the community? And I haven't uh, tapped my finger on that magic um, button yet, but I am very optimistic. And with the network that I'm starting to build now and with the rest of the team, I think we are setting ourselves up for success and the opportunity is ripe. Ashe, that's incredible. Thank you so much for your leadership and all that you're doing for so many. So my last question, do you have any calls to action or closing thoughts for our listeners and our viewers? Absolutely. Um, closing thoughts would be if you have a dream, please go out and pursue it. Um, oftentimes as women, as black women, we tend to shy away from um, putting ourselves out there, playing small. I say that because I used to be the girl in the corner, in the background, afraid to raise my hand. So 
I am going to invite you to raise your hand, apply for that role, um, apply, run for office, right? If you have a dream to start a business, just start and don't be afraid to ask for help. I am now learning how to ask for help and knowing that it's okay. Sometimes you'll get a no, but for the most part, you will find individuals around you who will reach out, lend you a helping hand and get you to where you need to be. So you will not survive in this world alone. We are a community oriented group of people. So please make sure you surround yourself with individuals who are there to support you and simply ask for help. Um, Call to action. Uh, the organization is called the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association, and I invite you to um, visit our website. It's called uh, Dufferin County CBA, www.dufferincountycba. We also have our YouTube channel where we have uh, hosted events and, and shared it on our platform. And last but not least, we have merchandise sales. So that's another avenue that we can use to help support the organization, whether it's a scholarship funding or even to keep the lights on. So any amount of support, sharing the website, sharing uh, the great work that we are doing as a community, that would be fantastic. Congrats. This is absolutely remarkable. Uh, when I when I came into this interview, I knew that you were going to share, but I didn't realize the depth and scope and, and, and breadth of your work and, and, and the deep impact. So once again, I applaud your leadership and the tenacity of not just you, but your entire family. So I know it takes a village to pull off work like this. Um, and, I, and I applaud all that you do for so many, your resilience, and just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to amplify your remarkable work with our community of practice. And as always at SETC, we close the way we began by giving thanks and acknowledging our creator, by giving thanks to the original stewards, the various lands around. We give thanks to all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We give thanks to all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Alitia. We so appreciate you. Ashe, thank you.